Now, Hannibal Barca was a legendary military commander of Carthage and the son of Hamilcar Barca, a general and a statesman who was involved in the First Phoenic War. He was one of the most effective military strategists in history. The Barca family were North African Berbers from Libya, Amazir. But hold on, where is the evidence? Let's analyze that. The other side of Hannibal Barca, which is very well known to the world, that his origin is Phoenician, you know, and therefore his origin is Semitic. Now, it is impossible to be Semitic and from North Africa at the same time. Okay? And Hannibal is from North Africa and no place else. So there's a contradiction here. There's a clear contradiction. You can't be both for, like a Semitic and from North Africa. There's a contradiction. Let me explain. Native North Africans provided seafaring Phoenician colonists exactly what they were looking for, trading partners. On the coast, agriculture likely adopted far earlier from interaction with Egypt and the fertile Crescent societies became a dominant future of the Berber society. Now, the two most prominent Libyan sedentary societies emerged by the 2nd century BC. Numidia and Mauritania. Carthage as a city-state did not occupy an extensive land area and outside the Tunisian peninsula and the North African coast did not have much direct influence. Now, thus, the Libyan kingdom of the Numidians and Mauri enjoyed, at least for the most of their history alongside Carthage, an independent commercial relationship. Numidian Berbers were also a major demographic within Carthage itself, though Phoenicians occupied the nobility and merchant classes, relegating natives mainly to serfdom and military conscription. It's like today in modern times, the Arabic language has occupied Tunisia since 1956, the Independence Day of Tunisia. Meanwhile, the native language of Tunisia, Tamazight, is forbidden in Tunisia. So, pretty much relegating natives mainly to serfdom and military conscription. During this time, the Greeks began documenting North Africa and its kingdom, shedding more light on the Berber tribes and their relationship with Carthage and being the first to refer to the people of the Maghreb as Libyans. Now, what does all this mean? It means Hannibal was not a Phoenician, but he was rather Phoenicianized. This is why he's so famous for being Semitic and Phoenician and all that kind of stuff. So, he was only Phoenician with the tongue. So was his father and the father before him. So, Carthage was Phoenicianized, but the majority there were Berbers in Carthage, not Phoenicians. Phoenicians was a minority, but the language, the tongue, was majority. So, in other words, the native Amazigh people in Carthage were Phoenicianized. Just like today, the Tunisians are Arabized. Thank you very much for watching, and I see you in part two. We, we are not seeing a significant genetic influence on the coastal populations of the Levant from elsewhere. They look very, very similar to the groups that we see inland in Syria and Jordan and places like that, suggesting that there was not a huge influx of people from somewhere else into the coastal regions of the Levant. So the, the people who lived in, in this region prior to the Phoenician period, the, the so-called Canaanites, are in fact the Phoenicians. There was a cultural shift, but not a genetic one. So the Phoenicians and the Canaanites and today's Lebanese are all the same people, and they're all very closely related to groups living in Syria and elsewhere in the Middle East. So that's kind of interesting, and that we're, we're pretty certain about that. We again, it's a pilot study. We'd like to expand the sample sizes, but we are pretty certain about those results. Now, in terms of tracing the spread, that turns out to be more complicated because in their largest colony, Carthage, modern-day Tunis, we are finding that less than 20% of the genetic lineages that we find there could have come out of the Middle East. Most of them look like Aboriginal North African markers, for lack of a better term. They they look like they've been there for much longer. So this is a maximum of 20%. It might be as low as 10% or even less. And again, we're awaiting more data to be able to tell for sure. What that means is that as the Phoenicians moved into this region, they probably didn't have a huge genetic impact. They, they simply changed the culture. So again, in the, ways, in the same way that the Sea Peoples probably influenced in some way the coastal population of the Levant, the, the people who became known as the Phoenicians influenced the region of North Africa around Carthage, but they didn't have a massive genetic input. There wasn't a huge you know, resettlement of people. At least we don't see.